Hello, welcome to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I take another first look, this time at Gare Sapphire Max. Or Gare Sapphire Max, or Gar. Maybe it's Gar Sapphire Max. I'm not sure what the emphasis over the R actually means. We're going to call it Gare for now because, well, I want to and because I can. So what is Gare Sapphire Max, you ask? It is a top-down action shooter where you control a mech and you battle other mechs or robots, as it were. It is by Prexen Studios. It was released on April 1st, which kind of makes it sound like an April Fool's joke, 2015, but I assure you it's not. It is still in this version 1.0 release. There is some grammatical errors in the English, but short of that, I really haven't found any other issues or problems with the game. It's a somewhat simplistic game, but there's something to be said about games that are somewhat simplistic. So. I already recorded this, but apparently I had some snafu with my mic or something. I don't know, guys. I'm still getting over being sick, and apparently I'm doing things wrong all the time. We're just going to create a new name, call it new name, and we're just going to go to town and play the game. So let's hop in, and the first thing you'll notice, there's 12 missions available to us, really only one at a time, but there's up to 12 missions available, and we have upgrades that we can buy. We have star perks, options, and of course the main menu. I know that music can get a little bit annoying after you hear it for like five hours, but short of that, you should be fine with it. I actually like the sound effects, the the game's uh, soundtrack, I'm sorry. I was going to say like a volumis volumistic mix of music, which would have made absolutely no sense because it wasn't supposed to. Anyhow, the music in the game is actually pretty cool. I enjoy it, and I, I like pretty much everything about the game except, again, I get a little bit like, eh, when I see poorly done grammar or misspellings, especially from like a game that's fully released, you would expect it by that point to really have weeded out most of this. But again, it's not really that big of a deal, you still know what they're trying to say for the most part, but we'll, we'll hop in in just a second here. I want to show you guys how the game plays and what the differences are. So you have legs, bodies, and legs, body, and guns as your available things. Now. You get upgrades going this way, and you get side grades going this way. So, to tailor it to your personal playstyle, you can choose a variety of different things. Like, this is more focused on speed and shields. This is more focused on shields. A little bit less speed, a little bit more power. This is more focused on armor and power than, say, shields or speed. And then when you get the next tier upgraded, you get the choice of all three again. So you can play around, mix and match, and figure out what you like best. Now the body, there's only two options. There's the one that's a little bit more focused on shield and shield regeneration. And it's got a little bit higher sensors, a little bit lower vision. This has higher vision, lower sensors, much heavier on armor and armor regen. And then finally, your weapons. I'm going to go with the default on most of them because I prefer the speed and the shields. However, I am going to swap out the weapon. The first weapon is low damage, decent accuracy, it's a decent caliber, and it's got um, a decent RPM, or uh, rounds per minute, I would assume. This has higher rounds per minute, a lower caliber, lower damage, and it's just a little bit less accurate too. So it's a Gatling gun. So you basically you have your auto blasters, so like a normal fire rate. Then you have the rapid fire rate, which is more of a machine gun. And then you have the cannon, the Ripper cannon, which is all about damage, accuracy, and caliber. But you shoot much, much slower. That's what I'm going to roll with because I like to hurt dangs. So with that, we're going to go back to mission select. And we're going to select our first mission. It's going to be in the blue zone. Uh, perimeter right there. It's going to be codenamed Blue Zone. And let's begin! Welcome to the Blue Sector. Since the beginning of the hostilities with the Adalin, the sector has been used by our forces to conduct tests and evaluations for new technologies we've developed to help the war effort. Its remote location away from the combat zones make it a good candidate for that purpose. Purpose should not be spelled that way. Shame on them. It's okay. It's okay. I'm only going to point out a few. I'm not going to go overboard on all the grammar corrections, just so you guys know. During an earlier assault, our Sentinels managed to capture an Adalan mech in perfect condition. No S. We are not sure of its full capabilities and need someone to make a test run on it. The data we acquired will be relayed to our development team, who will then make the final call on activating this mech in the Vitrus campaign. At the end of the sector, you will find a teleport pad that is programmed to receive, I'm going to guess, because I don't think that's a word, the access codes this Adalan mech have. 
Once we receive the data, we will open a transport matrix for you back to HQ. All right, there we have it, let's go. Okay, so you move around with WASD as you would expect. Wherever your cursor is at is where you will shoot toward. And that's pretty much it. So you can just sit back and chill and kind of bounce with the music. Oh, right, I have to play, don't I? Okay, sorry. I do actually enjoy the music quite a bit. However, that being said, we're going to have to turn it down a little because it is a little overpowering. I feel like I've been shouting this whole time and I should have probably adjusted the music before. Every time I restart the game, the music seems to reset, by the way. Just so you guys know. That might be too low on the, the sound effects, actually. Let's... Increase. There we go. That's a little bit better mix. Okay, so basically, yeah, you just... You just shoot and move. You just try to avoid getting shot and you kill enemies. I think the game looks a little bit better on lower resolutions, but I like to try to record and, and upload everything in full HD. So it might not look quite as good as it does on lower resolutions, but I still like it. It's quaint. It's an interesting choice that they went with, but it's not overwhelmingly unpleasant or, you know, bad in any way. I actually like it. I like their design choices. I think the game looks a little bit a little bit weird at this resolution, but I like the, uh, the, uh, what is it, like the blueprint look toward the different mechs that we're fighting, and if you notice, all the mechs, they, there's some that look a little bit different than one another, and I'm just tanking a lot of stuff with my shield right now, like a loser, that's what I do. But it looks like there's several different types of enemies, really what it is, it's all the same kind of enemy, but they are the different varieties that I showed you where you can build your mech with the different legs and everything else, that's what makes these things different from one another. They're just different builds of the same mech using different legs, different guns, and a different torso. So if you're wondering, that is pretty much what differentiates the enemies. And you, I mean, you can play it any way you want. I prefer the big heavy cannon, I actually like that a lot my favorite weapon, and I'm going to roll out with it. Now, a little thing to be aware of, this wall, we cannot walk over it, as you see. However, we can fire across it, and that's something that threw me off for a while. I would always forget that they can actually shoot me across the wall. So I'm like, aha, you have to come around the corner, or I am safe. Nope, I am most assuredly not safe. But I played probably about two hours of the game. I did actually try recording this twice now. Uh, yesterday I just wasn't feeling good enough, like, I, I got done with it, and I'm like, uh, it was too bad on my voice, it was, it just wasn't right, and then I tried it again, and apparently I swapped microphones to my headset mic yesterday, um, because I was speaking with my father over the mic, uh, kind of late, and I didn't want to talk too loud to keep my wife awake, so... I switched over to my headset mic, and in so doing, I don't know, something got changed in my settings. And when I got done, I'm like, okay, that wasn't too bad, I liked it, I liked it overall. Alright, we just got damage shield and armor upgraded, because we hit the next level. Also, you can crash into enemy mechs, I'll do it again here. You will take um, armor damage by doing so, but it's not that bad. You will heal up over time, which I will demonstrate as we go through. Anyway, long story short, I got done with the recording, I'm like, okay, yeah, let's get this up in, oh, there's absolutely no voice because it was looking for the other mic. Darn. So, there is that. Alright, we have made it to our goal, and it is time for us to leave this place. Hit T for teleport, and we get out of here. And they shall cheer me and call upon my favor. Yes, yes. Spare the child. Spare the... No, no, I don't know. Never mind. Anyhow, star perks. If you get all three stars in any... Any mission, you actually get a star perk. And this one is biometallic upgrades. Reduces the damage from collision with other robots by 10%. So that's what I got for getting all three stars in mission one. We're going to hop in and go to mission two in just a moment. But first, we're going to upgrade my legs. Because I want to be faster. Yeah, dude. All right, and there it is. So now we're faster. As you see, it's a pretty significant upgrade as well. If we wanted more power, we could definitely go that route. But I'm okay with I'm okay with our current power level. It's, it's good. All right, let's go to mission select and mission two. We're going to be codenamed Streetwalker, which is uh, interesting. And sector beta forty one. Start the mission. The results from the Blue Zone Evaluation Run were very positive. It appears that the captured mech has quite a large amount of untapped power in its core. 
For that, we have decided to put it to good use in our force. Since you had the most experience piloting it, its command has been handed over to you. Now that you are fit for combat, we have a situation that needs to be attended. Our sensors detected an abnormal activity in this sector. The readings and the meters don't reveal what we are facing, but we fear the worst. If the enemy is trying anything that close to our base, we need to take immediate action against it. Marked on your objective map, sorry, your objective map, I am still struggling to speak, guys. The flu did beat me up a little bit. It did beat me up a little bit. Our key areas that need to be scanned and refa refactored. I want to say refractored. I don't know why. The energy emission around those areas are very distinct, and we should recommend caution in approaching them. After the frequencies in the sector normalize and we have that data, we will open a transport matrix for you. Onward we go. Okay, we go to the next soundtrack. We'll just sit here and we'll just groove to it, right? Alright, so basically we have to run around and tag all these things. And if you take a look down here, you will see there are several different objectives on our little radar or mini-map. And we need to go to all of them. So I'm going to go around the periphery on the outside left. All the way around, up to the top, killing pools along the way. And then we will move on from there. Now I want to let you guys know that since we upgraded the legs, we now have a special ability. It is this ability. And basically it makes an impenetrable shield where bullets will deflect off of it, or uh, if enemies walk onto it, then they will die a horrible, agonizing death. So it is actually quite cool. And it gives us quite a few defensive capabilities we did not have before. The downside to it, well, there isn't much of a downside to it, but there is a slow recharge time, so we do have to wait for it to come back up before we can use it again. I guess that's one downside to it. The one thing to remember about it though is, despite it deflecting bullets, it only deflects enemy bullets. So I will I will show you what I'm talking about right here. See how the bullets just kind of went pew and went away? We can actually fire through it, so that makes it really, really sweet. So we got our first star, and we got a plus 20% experience gain or upgrade of some type. We've already tagged that. We'll come over here, and we'll continue along our upward expansion. Dealing with enemies as we see fit, and as they come along, I suppose. Alright, I shall use my shield and hide behind it, and slay enemies from afar. And you guys can see me miss over and over again, because I'm really good at missing. Allegedly. Apparently. Possibly. Maybe. Definitely. I am pretty good at missing, guys. I am pretty good at missing. Alright, well, if that guy ever decides to walk out, he's going to have himself a very bad day. Alright, so we took him out. I'm going to try to stay again along the top lines here. I am kind of dallying into the lower end of the region, so I will try to avoid that in future conflicts here. Because, again, we'll loop around eventually and get it all. I like to try to stay, like I said, around the outskirts. And just kind of make sure I cover everything. I don't want to miss anything or have to backtrack ineffectively or inefficiently, I suppose. I want to be as effective as possible with my movements. So, if I can do that, I will try very heartily to do so. An right, easy kill there, and a second star to pick up. Another objective right there on our map. And that looks like that's it for this top area. We clearly have an enemy over here that wants us to murder it, and there's some down this way as well, apparently. So let's say this whole area is clear, we'll grab the monies, and we will dodge and juke and jive and kill our way over here to this other star that is waiting for us, and we will take as many enemies out as we can, because again, Right now, the missions still seem pretty, you know, pretty easy, pretty standard, as, as I guess you would say for a game like this. But it does get a bit more chaotic, and when the enemies start using the special abilities as well, it gets to be a little bit more challenging, and a little bit scary, because sometimes you don't realize that, oh no, they're using a shield, and we're not able to actually get through that, oh no, and then you start getting wrecked, and it's, it's just, it's unpleasant. So, it's a game you definitely have to pay attention to. The further in you get, the more challenging and complex and complicated the missions are, the more enemies there are, and as you upgrade, the enemies upgrade as well. 
I don't know if it's, it's not a one for one, but I mean, as you get further along, the enemies will upgrade as well. So basically, you're moving faster, the enemy's moving faster, and well, it gets a little bit more challenging. Here's our final objective, and we can teleport out of here. Knowing that we have full clear this place. And again, they cheer my name. All right, it's Star Perk, and the new one is Positronic Memory. When you fail a mission, you keep 20% of the credits and XP you got in that mission. All right, we'll buy another upgrade, this time to our guns. And we have something new here that you guys did not see before. We have Tiki, or Tiki. These crystal en or entities, I was going to say enemies, these crystal entities are yet unknown to our forces, native from Vitrus 47. They are rarely seen on the field. Not hostile, this particular one decided to follow you after the discovery at Sector Beta 41. So that last mission we were on, this thing decided to follow us from, interestingly enough. Alright, so we got the tier 2 of the, of the weapons, and you'll see the tier 3 is way, way more expensive. And for the body upgrade, it's actually 3,000. But it's a pretty significant upgrade, as you see. So, there is that, and it shows you here all the star things you have unlocked as well. Okay, so let's go to mission select and do our final mission. Data mining, uh, sector XI or XL or X1 17. We'll start mission and. The radiation from Sector Beta 41 has turned out to be a reminiscent emission from one of the native inhabitants of the, of the planet. These magnetic crystal beings have been around since our first arrival in the Vitrus, but are rarely seen on the field. As far as we can tell, they still have not made any allegiances in the conflict, but could prove powerful allies against the Adalin if we manage to convince them. While we were on, or sorry, while you were on patrol, our intelligence network managed to intercept and decipher a signal from the Adalan Council. Inside the message, the keywords kinetic bombardment have been used to describe a new weapon in the Adalan arsenal. For a while now, we have been suspicious of the Adalan activities and their military tech. If they do in fact manage to develop this kind of weapon, we need to make sure they can't use it. The signal traces back to this location before the Second War. All sectors used to have an intricate system of controlling the flow of energy and monitoring environmental abnorm or, sorry, anomalies. Anomalies. I don't know why I throw a T in that word all the time. I do. I was going to say abnormalities, but eh. Anomalies. That works too. Storing all that information on data cubes that were later cleared. Nowadays, they no longer serve that purpose anymore, but still records every signal that goes through them. There's a chance that the data cubes in the sector still holds more wow, information than the message. Find them and report back. Alright folks, so I'm just gonna point out again, this is a, a note kind of to the developer as well. It's it's about 15, it's, it's a half a month has gone by, a couple weeks at least since the um, release of the game and there's still a lot of little typos um, like this last sentence was, you know, uh, there's still a chance that the data cubes in the sector still hold, it's not holds, it's hold, more information about the message. Um, intelligence is spelled with two L's. Um, there's a few other ones, it's, just, it's scattered throughout, it's a little bit weird. But, I don't know, maybe have somebody who's really, really good at English and spotting things, maybe go over all of your uh, text and just t touch it up. This should be an easy fix. Again, this is really the only thing I can find fault with in the game. And the higher resolution might not look as pretty as the lower resolution, but I still, I don't know, I find the game to be charming and it has its own unique flavor and I like it. So you'll see right there the enemy employed um, my very own shield against me. This guy has a shield that directly hovers around his body and you'll see another shield type come up soon as well. It's not quite yet. Alright, so they're all eliminated. We'll continue onward. Eventually, maybe. Okay, we got through most of these. Okay, one more guy to take out, and there it is. Alright, so I'm going to go along the left here, and then I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to come over. There's the other shield. So there's the tank wheel shield. It is basically just a giant bubble that hovers around you and slows and stops projectiles from coming through. I think it even flings it back at you. I'm not 100% sold on that one. Come on, dude. Stop running from me, man. 
Why are you running? Why are you chasing me? Yeah, see, they, they do fly back out. Alright, there we go. So we'll gather up all of those. And I must admit, I do like the blue, serene, lovely landscape around here. It is quite peaceful, and, uh, well, other than the whole murder everybody around you type situation, it's probably relatively peaceful. Okay, so this left side's cleared. We're gonna go down to the bottom and continue from there. Bear in mind, guys, I am still somewhat sick. And remember, we can still shoot over the walls here, but what we're gonna do is use our shield to our advantage. And, oh, he crashed into us with the shield on. I did a little bit of damage, not gonna lie. And you guys get to see how many times I can miss in a row. It's pretty impressive, wasn't it? But as you see, we are healing up rather rapidly, so... It's all well and good. I think I shot him, but I might have smashed into him. I don't know. I don't know exactly. We're gonna pretend like I shot him, though. Alright. We're gonna continue to fire this way, and we're gonna use our shield to deflect some of the hatred and passionate pain and loathing against us. Guy is down, and as you saw there, I played that one fairly decent. But you can already tell the game is starting to get a bit more intense. The enemies are coming a little bit quicker. They have special skills just like you do. There's more of them that are using flanking tactics and all sorts of things, so yeah. Yeah. The game gets a bit more complex, a bit more complicated, and quite a bit more challenging as you go through. I played through about mission five, I didn't want to ruin the entire thing for me. You know, if I beat a game, I'm like, eh, should I cover it? It's rare that I'll, I'll beat it, oh, I'm sorry. I'll cover a game that I beat. That's the words I'm looking for. That's damn. Alright, well, we've annihilated them. We're gonna go grab the data cube, because that's what we're here for. Alright, if you take a look, there's still two things left on our map as far as objectives. Our little radar, if you prefer. So we will have to go and deal with those shortly. This whole area is actually cleared out, so we can go up. And this is basically right back where we started from. I'm going to go to the right now. I'm going to clear out this side. It's going to be sweet, sweet nice, I think. I can get inside the bubble and shoot them, though. That's one of the cool things. I wasn't sure how that was going to work, actually, but apparently quite well. There we go. So look at that. Just walk right inside and pew pew, shooty shooty action. Don't want to walk over that. We get another star. That's two now available to us. We drop one, we drop two, we drop three, and four. Okay, all those guys are down. The data cube is ours. Our objective has been updated. There's only one remaining that we need to obtain, but. Again, we'll, we'll spend the time, we'll take the time, we'll do the full clear, it'll be sweet, sweet, nice style. Now, I've gotten a lot of games in, the, in my mail lately, to be covering. Every time you level up, you gain an damage, armor, and... I don't know what the other one was, maybe speed? Or shield, I think shield, armor, and damage. Uh, but I have gotten a lot of games sent to me in the mail to cover over the past couple weeks. And I'm going to do my very best over the next week or so to cover them. So you'll see another large influx of first look videos. I do apologize, getting sick was definitely not part of the plan, and it did set me back quite a bit for what I wanted to cover and what I wanted to get done. I still have some plans to get out of, uh, out from behind the eight ball that I've been behind for quite a while now. We'll see if I can actually execute those plans and see where they take me, but... I don't know, I'm still having fun with things, guys. I'm not, like dreading anything in particular, and I don't know, I'm looking forward to quite a bit of stuff, actually, so I guess there's that. I suppose there is that. Alright, we're gonna murder the rest of these guys. We're almost done with this level, and subsequently, this first look. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Like I said, the game might seem somewhat simplistic and a little bit easy, but it's something you could just go and spend 10-15 minutes a day playing. Just, you know, be like, you know what, I just wanna do something casual on my lunch break. Or before I have to go to work, just get into a game where I don't have to think super deep, like, okay, I have to make all these 100% right choices, this, that, and everything else. You just go, you're like, hey, there's enemies that are going to spawn, 
I shoot them, I try not to get shot, and that's pretty much it. That's your thought process. I have a special ability I can use to do choke points like this. That'll set me up for very easy wins, and yeah, I'm just going to utilize that and be victorious. And just enjoy the game, guys. Not every game needs to be super complicated. Sometimes it's nice to have a game that isn't as deep as something like, say, Dota 2, for instance. If I had to play only Dota 2 forever and ever and ever, I would probably still do it because I really, really love the game, guys. But it would be one of those things where I'm just like, eh, it's so much work. It's It drains you. It does. It really drains you. So it's nice to have just a casual game you can go and enjoy. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's the final star. And I believe that was the final enemy and the final pickup. So with that, we are done. Let them cheer our names. Here we are. Thank you, thank you, I'll be here all week. All right, let's see our final star perk. And it is Quasar Anti-Matter Generator. Tiki can now fire Quasar charged missiles at enemies. That sounds exciting. All right, folks, I could keep going and show you more and more and more and more, but I figured this is gonna give you a pretty good understanding, a pretty good idea of what Gare Sapphire Mex is all about. And hopefully you guys, like I said, enjoyed yourself. And you, well, you can decide whether or not you actually want to get the game now and, you know, play through the rest. I shouldn't have spoiled too much. It's still kind of the first three missions are still a little bit tutorialized. But yeah, that's pretty much how the game plays out, guys. It just gets more complex, more complicated, a little bit more uh, difficult with just number of enemies, their tactics, how they spawn, where they spawn, the special abilities they're using. And as we upgrade and the enemies upgrade, they hit harder. They move faster, we move faster, it just increases the pace of the game. So it gets exponentially harder and harder and harder and harder. Anyhow guys, that's going to do it for this first look. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share it. And I will catch you guys next time with another first look. Until then, I want to thank you for stopping by the Freak Show. My name is Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later.